Why do you hate that one co-worker so much? They do favors for people consisting of doing things no one asked for, such as choosing a schedule because they think you'd prefer the one they didn't take, or talking to the boss about something for you so they can defend what you did, then they act like you owe them for these things. On top of that they constantly do things outside of policy and act like a victim martyr when they get into trouble. Oh man, you just described my mom. She would always clean up stuff before I could all get drinks for my parties without being asked and then would make a huge fuss about it, ranting how much I depend on her and how she has to do everything for me. I mean, it was nice that she did it, but it was unnecessary and she was pretty rude about it all the time. He freaking smells so bad, and I feel guilty for hating him because he is a sweetheart but omg this dude seriously might shower once every other week or so. We work at a coffee donut shop and his uniform polo shirt that is supposed to be white is literally brown because he never washes his clothes. His khaki pants are covered in sugar and dirt. He smells like sugar, donuts, and B.O. I have to hold my nose when I walk past him or I gag. My mom said she worked with somebody like this. Management finally called him in to talk about it. He came in the next day reading of cologne. Eventually he was let go for something. That's when they found his hit list. Bad hygiene can be a sign of mental illness. He talks to himself the entire day, non-stop, through every bit of what he is doing. It is literal insanity. Okay, wait, insane laugh oh, I see now, yep. But then, non-stop, 8.5 hours, 5 days a week, I will murder you. Interrupts every conversation you are having, even if it involves her, like she interrupts you if you are talking to her to talk about herself, it's so infuriating. Also, complains about absolutely everything. Her favorite thing to complain about is what she gets paid to do. How dare anyone ask her to actually work. Rage. Just pure rage. Crap, that sounds like me. I need to change my way of being. Oh god, there are so many reasons. She never shuts up. She has no sense of when she's being obnoxious and thinks everyone loves her. Even the random people on public transit she continually strikes up conversations with. She constantly tells conflicting and increasingly impossible stories about her life. She grew up in Chicago. No wait. Wisconsin. No. In an artist commune in South America. Also. She's lived in every country you've heard of, in spite of her own narrow-minded blatant racism. She teases people about embarrassing incidents and thinks she's hilarious. She said that France deserved the Bataclan attack because of colonialism. She bragged about getting half of her ex-husband's social security checks even though they haven't seen each other in 20 years. She constantly talks crap about people of other races. I bought some cookies from a black girl scout troop. They gave me correct change. The cookies were less expensive than I thought and I was surprised. But she told me it was shocking that they would give me the correct amount of change. She's also amazed that the team we work with in India speaks English. She has no situational awareness and often talks crap about people in front of them. She constantly talks crap about other co-workers. Anyone. Really. Random strangers she sees. I wonder what she says about me behind my back. God, I needed to get that off my chest. Thanks for asking this question OP. He rarely works a full week, doesn't know how to do even a quarter of my job, and if I need a day off I have to make sure my work is done for how many days I take for vacation because he refuses to let me train someone to take over my shop. He also throws temper tantrums and storms out of the warehouse at age 50-ish. I was an average, polite human being to her once and now we're best friends. Such good friends that if I see her in the hall I hide less I am forced to listen to a 3 hour story about everything horrible in her life. My only co-worker in a tech support help desk line is a computer illiterate man child. Some highlights. Exasperated swearing fumbling with his headset every single time he gets a phone call. The most easily stressed and overwhelmed person I've ever met. Incapable of retaining context based information. If this customer, consider this custom work they've had. Frequently gives the customers wrong information. Passes work he doesn't know how to do to me, even though I haven't been there as long as he has. Gets personally offended when customers call email with problems. It's a tech support line. Dude. They're not. Calling you to chat. Sometimes refers to women as girlies. God awful jokes. 
all comic book 70s movie related. Unless the topic is video games, then his only joke is to reference Gallagher. He is the victim in all situations. Dislikes Game of Thrones. Doesn't use the scroll wheel because it moves too fast. The worst is that he thinks we're pretty good friends so he's really nice to me so I have to be nice to him too. The scroll wheel one is the most offensive. I work with a guy who will straight up lie, not just bend the truth, but completely fabricate lies out of thin air. It's really hard to deal with someone like this, because you have no idea what he's saying behind your back. All you know for sure is he's saying something. In my experience incompetent people like this will talk in circles. Blame others who are completely innocent uninvolved, or start confrontations only to lie so they can claim to be a victim. It sucks. He constantly tries to one-up me and act like an expert at everything. Completely narcissistic and, to make matters worse, I sit right next to him. I don't even open my mouth anymore unless it's lunch. Wait, he has actually tried to one-up me on my food selection before so never mind. Had a stepdad like this, I moved out. He thinks he's the smartest guy in the room and has to prove it every time he speaks. It's impossible to have a friendly conversation with the guy because he has to share his knowledge and opinions on every topic, and refuses to drop a topic unless he thinks he's convinced you that he's right. You can't politely disagree, or agree to disagree, because it will all be brought up again next time you see him. It's 2016 and she doesn't know how to operate Internet Explorer. Tell her to hit the blue back arrow in the left corner, and she will hit the red X in the opposite corner every god dang time. Then you have to log everything back in, because she doesn't understand. Where did it all go? It was just here oh my god. She's an idle moaner. She complains and whines about everything but does nothing to change what she's obviously so unhappy about. I work in an assisted home facility. This woman is late 40s early 50s. She was being all nice to me. Went to finish a load of laundry, which I offered to do. Seeing how it was from my half of the cottage, but she claimed it was alright. And when she came out of the laundry room she started screaming how she did everything around the cottage. Even though she just served supper and sat on her butt on her phone until I asked her to do her dang job. Called me an idiot because I have a speech impediment. Not that bad even 15 years of speech therapy later. And caused two residents to fall and then got pissy when I called them in. Like we are supposed to. We don't know if they have a freaking injury. No longer work there but I could have become a certified bus mechanic after all the times he tried to throw me under one. Dude could shift blame like no one else. We have a guy like that. The joke around the office is that we're all getting matching shirts with tire tracks on the back and Bran was here. Janice just does not give a frick. This is gilded with one up vote. I'm honestly impressed. When you share an office with someone, there's some unwritten rules. You don't fart when the other leaves the room. Surprise, I know it was you. But you also don't go to your mutual supervisor and say that you think I'm too stressed out and fear for your safety, when I've done nothing of the sort and am handling my business the same as I ever have. You don't complain that I never listen to your suggestions when you literally don't make any, but you do have those irritating habit of literally turning around and writing emails when we are in the middle of a conversation about work. You don't claim that you shouldn't have to listen to anything I have to say because I don't do my job, when my team has beaten your revenue by an average of 30% every month for the last 2 years. You don't claim that I'm not doing menial computer tasks that we both know are full of glitches and are never, ever, ever an indicator of business health, especially when you yourself haven't done them on a month, and I literally have an hour set aside every Friday where I do them, and only fell behind because I was on a business trip. You don't refuse to hire even though every indicator shows you are 3 understaffed, because you want to inflate your numbers, while allowing your team to underreport the hours that they work in an attempt to keep your labor rate down. Basically you don't trash talk the other person in a feeble attempt to cover up the fact that you don't run your team, refuse to make hard decisions, put your own leisure time ahead of the actual success of your team and you don't complain about your workload when you are doing seven hours a day to the guy who's running two remote locations and you actually have the luxury of seeing all your employees every day fortunately my boss saw right through all the rubbish 
from her long and loud personal phone calls during work. I know how many pushes her daughter needed for labor, how much she's in debt, how her son-in-law is borderline abusive, the grooming schedule for her dog, peaches, and her ringtone is a cat meowing. Ex-co-worker thank god. She was the bitchy receptionist who I referred to as the C in the front when describing her to others. Cront. Claims to put a lot of value on being nice and polite and teamwork but is backstabby and passive aggressive. I am much more of the stale 8 to help you when you're in a jam, but also tell you loudly to shut up when you are on variety. Because I am constantly having to clean up her messes. She has been in our department for years but barely knows how to use a computer, and still fails to understand our basic procedures. To top it off, she whines constantly about how hard she is working when in reality she does less than anyone else. And if you call you on her crap she will go to the bathroom for 10 minutes, then leave for the day claiming to suddenly be sick. She is a 60 plus year old woman who behaves like a petulant child and I have no idea why she is still employed here. Oh, and she smokes like two packs of Paul Malls a day in her car with the windows rolled up. So when she comes back in from her breaks she reeks like an ashtray. TL, DR, lazy, stupid, whiny, bitchy, and smells like an ashtray. Because she makes her work her life. She is upper management's wet dream but for those under her, she's just an incessant martyr. And then when we complain about her, her micromanaging and other annoying management habits, she is never held to account because she does such a good job. No, she just does long hours. It's not the same thing. This is the kind of person who gets fired from good companies. Go work at one of those instead. He says and does crap to me that is borderline sexual harassment. I've even had to lie and say I'm straight but he still won't leave me alone. Frick gay guys who think they can hit on you, holy frick it's so annoying. They think that because I'm interested in the same gender as them that they can fricking grope me. Rant. He's a two-faced double dealing frick nugget coward bellied scum from the mercenary's barrel bottom. There's more morality in an animal's post-mortem excrement than his entire flesh. Dear dollar, I hate your stinking guts. You make me vomit. Your scum between my toes. Love, alfalfa. This isn't someone I currently work with, but rather, someone who I worked with up until about a month ago. I also wouldn't say that I hate her, but she is probably the most annoying person I've ever met. I work in a daycare, and this woman was hired to work in the infant room. She has no children of her own, had never worked with children before, and didn't really seem to like children, which was evident by the fact that she acted like she had the most stressful job in the world. Mind you, she worked with babies, so her job mostly consisted of sitting around while the babies slept. She complained to me incessantly, often about how the babies kept getting her sick so she couldn't go to CrossFit, and also about how one of the other women in the infant room, who is the mother of a one year old, kept correcting her work. That particular woman, who is a total sweetheart, was the reason the annoying lady eventually quit. Some more annoying things about her, would cry for baby spit up on her, would cry for no real reason, would try to set the baby she was holding on top of the baby I was holding if she felt overwhelmed, yelled at the babies, boasted about her healthy lifestyle which was non-GMO and gluten free, even though I saw her eat goldfish crackers pretty much every day. She told me she would rather Donald Trump be president than Hillary Clinton because Hillary doesn't support GMO labeling. Thankfully she is from Australia and not a US citizen. Told me she has herpes. Would talk about her Tinder hookups. Told the other women at the daycare when she peed her pants at work. Would brag about how good looking she is even though her teeth look like candy corn. Broke up with her on again, off again boyfriend of 3 months and then took him back because he met her requirements of getting rid of his cat, cleaning his carpet, and going to crossfit with her. He eats like a freaking Neanderthal. Imagine the sound of two wet hands squishing a banana with honey. That's the sound his mouth makes when he eats even a tiny candy. I don't get how a mouth can make that much noise. Oh boy where do I begin? 
Dude leaves company because a woman his maid manager begs for his job back saying he will respect the boss and not let his B company interfere with work. But fast forward a few months the dude is being a crap lord and doesn't want us to celebrate Halloween and Christmas even though he proudly proclaimed he was a Christian I can get Halloween but come on dude. And ultimately ate all the Halloween candy that was meant for the customers. Dude had ADD as heck making random inventions that would fail in a month's time and he wouldn't take the blame for it even though he made the modifications. He would eat all the snacks provided for the staff and just started taking multiple snacks at a time and eating them with various loud chewing noises. But he would show us how he ate chips which was by smashing the bag so the chips form a dust to where he would ingest the whole chip dust in one sitting. Come a month ago his B stuff keeps getting in the way and he keeps asking for time off schedule changes with no stored PTO and gave the ultimatum to my bosses to let him do what he wants or he's gone. That was an easy goodbye as he was already on thin ice. Oh and he did around 15k worth of damages alone blowing up a VFD by spraying simple green on it, spiderwebbing a thick glass panel, breaking a whole rack and various things because of his carelessness. That and he made a racist joke the first shift we worked together. Frick you Ben. Sorry for poor formatting on my phone. Because he attempts to play stupid pranks on me that no one finds funny. Plus, I don't think we agree on a single thing. Mother doesn't even like Archer. I work with this really obese girl from Australia and she's pretty much loathed by everyone in the entire store. Let me tell you about Sherry. Sherry is about as tall as the wallabies she always talks about and has in but as wide as my oven. But Sherry does little to no work while at work. Sherry never takes responsibility for her frick ups, for which there are plenty. Sherry never stops talking about herself, her man, husband, whom she met over WOW, and moved here, Canada to marry, and her beloved Australia, mainly how much better and uniquely superior it is to Canada in every way. Sherry is just generally a crappy human being who doesn't take cues from people that she is generally disliked and needs to stop talking. Sherry is always on a diet, but every day is cheat day and Wendy's is right across the street. Sherry is going to finally join the gym this weekend, or next weekend, maybe the one after that. Sherry eats two pieces of birthday cake and is always first in line for seconds. Sherry eats so fast she forgets to breath and gasps for air. Sherry will disappear during the busiest times to go text her man in the bathroom while she takes a crap. Sherry likes to sing along loudly to the music at work but use her own lyrics since she doesn't remember the proper ones. Sherry is going bald in her 20s because her diet is so poor and she has no nutrition in it. Sherry rarely washes what thinning hair she has left. Sherry bites her nails loudly and while her hands are extremely dirty, we handle used clothing all day. She makes slurping noises she bites them so intensely. Sherry likes to answer questions that were asked to people other than her, loudly and repeatedly until you acknowledge that she knew the same answer, even though no one freaking asked you Sherry. Sherry is the bane of mine and everyone else's freaking existence in my workplace. Frick you Sherry. As an Australian reading this I would like to offer an apology on behalf of the nation, but you can keep her. Employee who, I literally believe, warps reality around her to better convenience her. We've had conversations where she disagrees with my decision. I tell her we'll try it my way first and if it doesn't work we'll reevaluate it. She then leaves my office and tells my assistant manager that I said to do it her way. As it comes to ask me, and I of course say no way. We had a meeting last week, along with my boss, to see what her problem is. Not only does she not have a problem she's behind me 100%. I bring up a conversation we had of her previously telling me something relevant. Trying to paint her into a corner, and she twists it all around to make it seem like I'm making up the conversation. After that meeting she emailed my boss to point out to him how disrespectful I was to her and how I was constantly interrupting her. A pet peeve of mine so I almost never do it. He came to me saying were we all in the same meeting the funny thing is that she interrupted my boss more than once which he recognized. Is the same rank as us. Not management or anything, but tells us fellow workers to do this and that. Like she runs the show, then complains to the bosses if someone is not up to her pace. She never takes lunch or breaks and feels it's okay to hold everyone up to her seek head pace of work. Moreover she literally has no life outside of the job and because of this, alienated herself from any real friends at work except for this other nasty old bee by talking behind people's backs. 
boss's daughter. He lets her get away with anything that would get anyone else in the company fired. You think of something and she probably does it daily. Texts the entire time. Makes long personal calls. Gets on Facebook a lot. Rushes people to do her job for her and then takes the credit. My co-worker constantly brags about her teenage son. How smart he is. How great at sports he is. How handsome he is. She is obsessed with him. I know more about him than many of my friends. This bee complains about anything. I've never had a conversation with her where she hasn't brought up something negative. Sometimes I want to slice my hand open and slap her in the face with my B plus blood. Study harder so you can get A blood. He's the most dangerous and incompetent person on the floor. He's an obnoxious loud mouthed bully. He's also the floor snitch. Because when he comes in and says good morning and you're on the phone with a customer and just give a little wave of acknowledgement he'll keep standing next to you until you end your phone call and tell him good morning. Also everyone else adores him and that makes me suspicious. Like does he drug them and is creating a Stepford army? 5pm. I have two jobs I don't need this job screw this I'm not doing my work. 6pm. I can't believe they are cutting hours how am I supposed to pay the bills? I don't work with her anymore but she was a huge hypocrite. She talked about Weight Watchers all the time, making veiled suggestions to people who should join, while steadily gaining weight. She was little Miss Christian who stabbed me in the back with her lies and gossiped constantly. He's lazy but acts like he's the hardest worker there. He does one or two things. It takes him why I too long. He doesn't even do it well. And when he's done acts like he just parted the Red Sea. First we have Rictus, the typical evil grandma from any story. She's old to the point where she has that old person grin all the time and she does nothing all day. Just stalks up and down the aisles, shaking her head in disapproval at everything, and B, loudly, about not getting enough hours. Next we have Coco B, where, the bird man, a young kid with a big problem understanding personal space. When he is done stocking an aisle he'll flap his arms a few times like some barely pubescent bird of prey. I could let it slide as a sort of working the muscles out exercise, if not for the fact that we cause while doing it. He's also a close talker, and those guys are buttholes. Lastly we have Disney, blonde hair down to her butt, non-stop full mouth singing all damned day. We're at work in the salt mines, no one cares what a few of your favorite things are. You've killed that song you and sip it tea. Also, she thinks she's a manager, which is something that always pisses me off. Couple that with her homeschooled personality, and you have the perfect recipe for blood pressure. Take your pick. I have one that creeps up behind people and meows in their ears. Also has absolutely no social awareness. The 5 minutes I have to see him between shift changes is more than enough. Had a co-worker who... Despite being well above 30 and me being the youngest at 20, acted like we were all still playing a high school game and she was queen. Now she stalks me at my favorite restaurant and she reports back to everyone where I used to work. I used to work with my ex's mom, and she explodes about me to her son each time I am sighted. I'm the concept art designer of a game dev company. This game designer guy, whose job is mainly writing plot and stuff, is a smug as frick we boo. Once made up that he has a long distance relationship gf when he saw my gf visited me, and implied that he'll bang my gf. What a dipshit. He always tries to slide in some of his already rejected ideas of design and get me to draw for him. Not to mention he always acts like his ideas are the greatest. It's okay, you just draw this, and they will like it. Don't worry, fucked it. We had just discussed and rejected your crappy ideas. They don't fit in the game. An anime girl with huge breasts and huge mecha in a kids game full of cute monsters and stuff? Are you mad? So I reported this to the head of art department and she told me to just ignore him. He's full of himself. If I did as he said, not only I'll waste my time on a rejected idea, but I also have to take the responsibility when he can walk away guilt free. So, later, our producer gave us some feedback on some visual changes. So we needed to adjust some of the art assets designs. It was a pretty normal thing to do in development, but then that sucker came over and said, Why are your designs so bad? You could have avoided this adjustment should you took my advice. 
and when he saw the producer coming by to drop some instructions on how to adjust the designs, he was like I told him so but he would not listen. Producer, you are absolutely right. I agree with all your choices. This guy should really learn a lesson from you to be more adequate. The producer just shrugged and tell him to return to his workplace. He's been harassing me for like half an hour. After he's gone, the producer told me just ignore that douche, as well. Yet, yeah, like he really has any idea of concept art design to belittle me. Such loser. He was let go from the company two months later due to his incompetence. He did not do his work, like, at all. Always try to blame others for it. 2. So karma. Dickhead. Because he is a crayon eating mother sucker freaking mouth breathing bastard sucking up valuable oxygen from hard working guys. Drinking the water the whales need. For clarification, I take care of people with disabilities for work. He hides things and moves things around. Biggest thing recently has been a large hospital cup. We have one client who requires 1000 cc's of water a day, given through a tube. This is the only client that needs a measured amount of water. And yet, when he works with a specific other client, who needs an amount of water equal to his food, both can be measured by syringe. He hides the cup so that only he can use it. it. Makes it difficult to measure the water. He moves things around seemingly randomly and with no reason. Most recently he seems to think that all the of our plungers belong in one bathroom. He in general doesn't care what the other employees are doing, which causes all of us to hate working with him. Best example is that he doesn't make dinner unless it's explicitly told to him. Which has led to an hour late dinner tonight because he didn't make dinner while I was with another client at a medical appointment. The guy is an actual moron. He was tasked with changing a light. They are small strip lights that you just have to twist and they come out. He's done it hundreds of times before. He was changing the light above my desk, wobbling about on a wheelie office chair to reach it but he can't unhook the bulb. I'm looking at him thinking crap. He's definitely going to fall. At that moment he stopped, got down from the chair and walked off. I breathed a sigh of relief and carried on with my work. A couple of minutes later he comes back, climbs straight up on the chair and before I can stop him he jams a knife into the socket in an effort to unhook the bulb. Cue a pop as the other lights go off and him flying off the chair and landing in a heap as he got a minor electrocution. I start shouting at him in shock about what the heck he was thinking. He shouted back I don't need you to tell me what to do. I've got loads of other stories about him, but that is the most ridiculous. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.